All right, so this lesson is on uh, parallel and perpendicular lines, and then uh, there'll be a little vocabulary in these, okay, because on the test, when it goes over this stuff, it's going to ask you questions, uh, not to describe the vocabulary, but it will say, it will use the vocabulary in the question, and then you have to identify uh, angles and sides and things, okay? So, uh, parallel lines. Parallel lines... It's an inter interesting situation, okay? Because parallel lines have a lot in common. But unfortunately, they never meet. Ever. Which is kind of sad. Okay? But uh, all other lines, they meet once. And then drift apart forever. Which is pretty sad as well, right? Okay? So, parallel lines, again, they just never meet. They never touch. They will go on forever and ever and ever and never come together. So, that is parallel lines. Perpendicular lines, on the other hand, again, they meet once, but in a very unique way they come together, all right? As you can see here with this little symbol... Perpendicular lines come together, but uh, when they do, they form a 90-degree angle, okay? So, that would be perpendicular. So, go ahead and uh, look at this chart, uh, fill it out, and see what, uh, what you come up with. Alright, uh, so you have your stuff. This is what the book has. You can copy it down if you want, uh, but just uh, some quick answers if you need them. Alright, so let's look at uh, some of the terminology here, alright? So it gives us this example. Again, that's not going to matter too much, okay? Because this is just one example. In some cases, you'll see two lines. Now, the thing about these lines is that they are parallel. And notice the book is using these red... Um, arrows to indicate that they are parallel. Okay, all of the pretty much all the vocabulary today requires that these two lines be parallel. Okay, so those are parallel lines. But in addition to that, it's going to draw some kind of line that goes through them, and this is what we call a transversal line. Okay, so that create some very interesting and unique scenarios uh, about these angles which over here they're labeled 1 through 8 and we could do the same thing right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay but uh, again that's that doesn't really matter all right right now uh, for now it just wants you to know that this line that cuts through these two parallel lines is called a transversal line. So on the test, it may give you a situation. It'll say, uh, name the transversal line, and it'll have an L there, so it'd be transversal line L. In some other cases, they're going to use maybe a different letter, such as, uh, I don't know, J or T even. K? Or K, yeah, sure, whatever. So just understand that a transverse line cuts two other, in this case, parallel lines. Um, so it, it cannot be parallel to them. All right, so let's take a deeper look into this situation. All right, so this is the model that it gives us. So, uh, again, how can we tell that these two lines are parallel? That's because we have these red arrows here, okay? So since we have those, we know that those two lines are parallel. Uh, again, let's look at some of the terminology. So in this model, uh, we have some angles that we would consider interior and some that are exterior, okay? Now this is in relationship to the parallel lines. So let's look at our parallel lines. We've got these two parallel lines, okay, so in terms of these two parallel lines, we've got what we would consider to be an outside 
of the parallel lines and then we have also an inside of the parallel lines okay so if they're if they're sandwiched between those parallel lines that is what we call interior okay this is the interior of the parallel lines and then we consider these angles to be interior angles so 4 is interior 3 is interior 5 is interior and 6 is interior those are all interior angles and there is a relationship between them which we will go over in just a second alright so if those are interior then we have this whole outside area right now we could call them outside angles but of course since we are in math we have to call these something maybe a little bit more complicated than it actually is okay uh, again we look at those parallel lines here's one here's another these other ones would be considered it's called exterior like you have a house you have an interior of the house which was why they called them uh, interior decorators and then you have an exterior part of the house as well which is the outside now there's two parts of the exterior which again is just in relation to this these parallel lines okay so you have an interior you have these two exterior parts alright so since that's the case we can see that these angles here are considered exterior angles so you have interior angles which is three four five and six and exterior angles which is one two seven and eight okay interior angles exterior angles okay well let's take a deeper look into these let's look first just at these interior angles so you can still see We've got our parallel lines. Okay, I can put the red arrow if that's what you're concerned about. Okay, just to show that these are actually parallel. So what we need to do is figure out the relationship between these. Okay, is there a relationship? And if so, what is it? Okay. Now four and three are supplementary angles, right? Because they fall on this straight line. Five and six are also supplementary, okay? Um, so that's that. But uh, is there another angle that is congruent or is equal to angle three among these interior angles? Okay, take a moment and look and see if you can figure out if one of them is and if one of them are congruent to angle three then which angle is it? Alright, some of you figured this out. Angle 5, as it turns out, is the same. It will have the same exact measurement as angle 3. They're congruent, okay? We can indicate that with a mark like this. So, angle 5 is congruent to angle 3. This is what we call, okay, their interior, right? So let's write interior, they're interior angles. But notice three is on the right and five is on the left in terms of their intersection, okay? So they, in other words, they're going to alternate. So these are alternate interior angles. And as it turns out, alternate interior angles are the same. Well, let's look a little bit deeper into this and you can see some of you have noticed angle 4 which we will indicate with two marks is also alternate with angle 6 and since they're on the interior they're alternate interior angles and we do consider these to be congruent alright now let's look uh, not at 3, 4, 5 and 6 so let's get rid of those so now that those are gone, let's look just at these exterior angles, all right? Well, as it turns out, the relationship is very much the same as 
the interior angles, okay? If we alternate them, so if we look at angle one, I'll give it the mark as well. Let's give it three marks because we already used one and two. And this one, seven. Angles one and seven, notice, you can see that they actually make up the same angle, just like the interior ones did that alternate. One is on the left, seven is on the right, just that they're on different, uh, they're on different parallel lines, okay? So angle one, as it turns out, is congruent to angle seven. But not only that, angle two, which will give uh, four marks, is also congruent to angle eight, which again will indicate with four marks. The marks indicate that the angles are congruent. Okay, so angle two is congruent to angle eight. And again, we call these, okay, we call these, they were alternating, so we alternate. They're on the exterior, and they're just angles, okay? So alternate and ex exterior angles are and have a congruent relationship. Again, I'm going to point this out. This only works if these lines, these two lines here, this one and this one, if they are parallel. These only are congruent if they're parallel. Okay? Uh, you can still have alternate exterior and interior angles, but they won't be congruent if these are not parallel. Okay? But these ones are parallel, so they are congruent. Okay, let's look at this once again. So we've gone over exterior angles, interior angles, alternate interior angles, and alternate exterior angles, and how they have congruent relationships with those alternating angles. All right, but let's look at another situation here. So let's look and uh, let's split this into two separate parts, okay? So I don't really need this or this. Alright, so what we have here now, again those lines are parallel which is crucial to what we're doing here. We have two intersections, okay, and I made points there. And uh, let's look, okay, so each of these is going to have a part in their respective intersections, right? For example, Angle 1 is in the top left corner of its intersection. Angle 5 is also in the top left corner of its intersection. So, as it turns out, angle 5 and angle 1, they are congruent. Again, this only works because these are parallel lines. Okay? Angle 1 and 5 are corresponding. They have the same corresponding part in the intersection. So these, as it turns out, again, let's write this, they are corresponding angles, and they do create a congruent relationship. So if we look at angle one, we have, uh, we have that angle one is congruent to angle five, because they're corresponding angles. Not only that, but angle one is congruent to angle seven. Why are why is angle one congruent to angle seven? Because angle one and angle seven are alternate exterior angles. It's, again, it has to do with these lines being parallel. Okay, since the lines are parallel, angles one and seven are congruent because they're alternate exterior angles, okay? So notice that creates a relationship between angles 5 and 7, okay? 5 and 7 are congruent because they're congruent to angle 1. Uh, but not only are they congruent to angle 1 because they of their corresponding part and their alternate exterior, but also... Some of you may remember this, but these are vertical angles. Vertical because they go through 
uh, this point here which would be called a vertex so angle 7 is congruent to angle 1 angle 5 is congruent to angle 1 right, let's go ahead and write these down so we have but then in addition to that notice angle 1 is vertical with angle 3 which is also alternate interior with angle 5 and it's corresponding with angle 7 so as it turns out angle 1 is also congruent to angle 3 so if we were to write this out using a list we could say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5 which is congruent to angle 7 which is congruent to angle 3 okay and again the relationships are different okay, if we look back angle 5 is corresponding with angle 1 angle 7 is alternate exterior with angle 1 and angle 3 is vertical to angle 1 and these are all congruent relationships because of these parallel lines so let's take a look again okay if we were to look at angle 2 what angle is alternate exterior with angle 2 angle 8 angle 8 is alternate exterior with angle 2 what angle is corresponding with angle 2 alright so let's look angle 2 is in the top right of its intersection if you look at this other intersection angle 6 is in the top right so it corresponds with angle 2. And what angle is vertical to angle 2? Angle 4. Very good. So the rest of these are just, again, all of the terminology that is used. You have corresponding angles, alternate exterior angles, alternate interior angles. And again, when it talks about interior or exterior, it's talking about these vertical lines, okay? Same same with up here, in, interior and exterior, okay? The only difference is these alternate, so they are also congruent or they're equal to. All right, real quick, this is just a notational thing uh, with lines, okay? Lines are always are generally used with lowercase letters, all right? But if you see this symbol, this is the parallel, uh, perpendicular rather. This is the perpendicular symbol. If you see two lines, sometimes they're slanted like this. And as you can see right here, it's just two uh, lines like this. And if maybe they'll use A and C or U and T, it doesn't matter. And that indicates that the two lines are parallel. So perpendicular here in green and parallel here in the red. So let's look at an example. How would I want to show if I had uh, two lines, let's say uh, S and J. All right, if I have two lines S and J, how would I show that those two lines are perpendicular? Well, if I wanted to write it out, I would say S is perpendicular to J and again, the order doesn't matter, so some of you may want to write J is perpendicular to S. That doesn't matter. Well, what if I wanted to write that M is parallel with, uh, I don't know, uh, C. All right? So I would say that M is parallel. I like to use the slanted lines, but again, you can use them straight up if you want. M is parallel with C, so... C is parallel with M, whichever way you want to use. All right, so let's look at these. We've got angles 1 and 7. What is their relationship on this one? Well, notice both of them are on the exterior, so we know they're exterior. Right, both of them are on the exterior. Yes, they are angles, so that's fine. Uh, but they alternate. Notice one is in the left. 7 is on the right as far as the exterior parts go, so they are also alternating. So we would call these alternate exterior angles. 
Okay. What about angles 2 and angle 6? Are they exterior? No, both of them are not exterior. Because angle 6 is interior. So are they both interior? No. Because angle 2 is exterior. Uh, so let's look at the intersections then. Okay, 2 is in the top right of its intersection. 6 is in the top right of its intersection. So these are corresponding angles. All right, go ahead and take a moment and classify angles 4 and angle 6. All right, let's take a look. Again, we're looking at angles 4 and 6. So angle 4 is right here, and angle 6 is right here. Uh, okay, are they exterior? No. Neither of them are exterior. Are either of them interior? Yes, as it turns out, both of them are actually interior angles. So they're at least interior. So the next thing is, do they alternate? Okay, yeah. See, angle 4 is on the left. Angle 6 is on the right. So these ones, as it turns out, they do alternate. So these are alternate interior angles. Alright, so the book makes a good point here. Notice that uh, they indicate yeah, they're, they are interior but they alternate because of where they are in relationship to the transversal. Alright, so finding missing angle measures. Alright, this is pretty nifty because as it turns out in order to find the angle measures we really only need one of them. Alright, so let's look at an example. Okay, so this is a bookcase, and please don't let the picture bother you, all right, because it's really not that important. You've got all this stuff here, and this, and this, this. Really, all we're worried about is the two parallel lines and the transversal. Okay, so there's line A, here's line B, and then also line uh, the transversal. Okay, so now that we have that, Let's take a look, and so let's let's list all the angles that we have. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and figure out each of these angle measures. Well, angle two tells us is 105 degrees. All right, from this we can figure out all of the other angle measures. Let's look. Where is angle two? There it is. Angle two is interior, so it's alternate ex interior angle rather to angle 2, alternate interior to angle 2. What angle is it? Angle 7. So angle 7 also has a value 105 degrees. Alright, what angle corresponds to angle 2? Angle 4. So angle 4 is also 105 degrees. What angle is vertical to angle 2? Now let's just cross the intersection and we have angle 5 which again has to be congruent to angle 2 so it's 105 degrees. But what do we do about the rest of these angles? Well, as we talked about before, angle 2 is supplementary with angle 6. It's also supplementary to angle 1. So let's uh, compare to, let's just do it comparing to angle 1, okay? Because it doesn't matter which of them we use. Angle 1 is supplementary to angle 2, meaning that they add up to 180 degrees. If I took angle 1 and added it to angle 2, I'd get 180. So to find angle 1, I'm just going to subtract angle 2, which is 105. And what do we get? Seventy five degrees, okay? So angle one is seventy five degrees, but it is vertical with angle six, so angle six is seventy five degrees. Angle one is corresponding with angle three, which means it's congruent. 
75 degrees. And it's also alternate exterior with angle 8. So angle 8 is also 75 degrees. And there you go. With this situation, we were able to find the values of each of the eight angles when all we had to start out with was angle 2. Right, let's look at this example. Okay, now some of you are looking at this and how many transversals are there? Two. Two transversals. What lines make up the transversals? Very good. You got line Q and line P which transverse through and they didn't show this in the book but uh, we're just going to say that line M is parallel with line N, okay? So, uh, it tells us angle 8 is 90 degrees, angle 1 is 40 degrees. So let's list all the other angles that are congruent to angle 1. Well, angle 1 right here is alternate exterior with angle 6. Notice, I've just ignored line Q, okay? Because all these angles are listed along transversal line P. So, angle 6 is alternate exterior with angle 1, so it is also, it's congruent, so it's also 40 degrees. What angle corresponds to angle 1? Uh, you can see angle 3 does, so it is also 40 degrees. And what angle is vertical to angle 1? That's going to be angle 9. So this is also 40 degrees. All right? Well, angle 1 is supplementary with angle 10. So if I take 180 degrees because they're supplementary, subtract angle 1, which was 40 degrees, that gives me angle 10 which is 140 degrees. So we know angle 10 is 140 degrees. And what angle is vertical to angle 10? Angle 2 is, so angle 2 is 140 degrees. And what angle is alternate exterior to angle 10? As it turns out, both of angles 5 and 4 are. But they're split, okay? So let's look at angle 8 because it's given to us right here. All right, angle 8. What angle is vertical to angle 8? Very good. Angle 5 is congruent to angle 8. So angle 5 is 90 degrees. So the thing is since we have angle 5, which is this one, and we know that if it's combined with angle 4, that gives us angle 10, which is 140 degrees. So angle 5 is also 90 degrees. Angle 5 and 4, if we put them together, are 140 degrees. So let's write this out. Angle 5 plus angle 4 equals 140 degrees. And I know some people are going to be upset because it's actually the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 4. Well, the measure of angle 5 is 90 degrees, which we found out, plus the measure of angle 4 is 140 degrees. So you can see from this, if you were to solve for the measure of angle 4, it would give you 50 degrees, okay? Angle 7 is vertical with angle 4, so it is also 50 degrees. And as it turns out, these are all the angles, and we're done.